Hey guys, welcome back to the farm. Hey, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, stick around for a while. Soybean harvest is in full effect. We're on some rented ground here right now. Dad's in the combine, I'm out here with the family. Grant's first time, hopefully we can get him in that combine. Rochelle's got summer, she fell right asleep with that, with that gator. So he's gonna come across, there's three fields here that we rent, and uh, it's a buddy of ours, Preston Bengry. Uh, Preston, if you're watching, we're thinking of you. So yeah, he's marks in the grant card. He's gonna pull up right now and unload. He's driving all the way around the corner on the other side of their property, dumping the semis on the road. Cause this will only probably be a couple semi loads. And then they're gonna move to another field on Dorn Road that we just bought, that field and house. So weather's right, 70 degrees. Family's having fun. This is uh, very, very nice weather, isn't it, Grant? Bye-bye. On the opposite end of the field here, I want to show you some of these beans. Look how many pods are on these stems. Because we had some, some bean fields. They've been going now for a few days. We had some fields that, that weren't too good. But, but this field, these, these are these are excellent looking. trailer this used to be a ups truck it had low low miles on it we bought it this is our grain cart perfect for what we need okay moved out of our buddy preston bengry's fields and now we're, we're about a mile down the road from the farm a field that we had bought and probably i don't know we bought a lot of ground here in the last 10 years so probably five years ago uh, this this farm actually was owned by my grandpa's brother, so it was my dad's uncle Tom. He lived there. Uh, I would say when dad moved, when grandpa moved up here, so our farm was from '52. He probably lived here in the '50s. He ended up dying young. He died in his at about 54 years old. And um, a guy, a family bought this named Guy Haynes, and we're actually friends with his son, Guy Haynes Jr. But they they sold us this field a few well three to five years ago. That's where they live right there. Um, they're not farmers, and uh, we, we maintained a good relationship with them. So we're we still farming, and I just thought it was kind of cool that that this was in our family. Um, you know, probably in the '70s is when that was sold. So so 50 years later. Um, we got it back in, uh, you know, Grandpa's brothers, and now, uh, so it'd be my great uncle. And we're back farming it, and uh, that's just what I want to tell you. Where the beans are coming off, look how dry that is. And this is just a nice, it's a square forty, and uh, that over top of that fence row there, that's uh, owned by another lady. We open that fence row up, as you can see, and we go right in there, and that turn that into a fifty acre. Just took the family home. Yeah, this is the 7830 we run on for the grain cart. This is our bean plant and tractor. New field. This is on the curve here, Brown City Road, or it used to be a curve, and they redid it. This is we bought this. This is 30 acres. We bought this probably only a few years ago. Used to be a house right there. Burnt down. That's why they sold it. There's still a barn here. 
we're thinking about getting the barn moved out of here and then clearing the rest of this i mean there's a well out there but we're, we're thinking about clearing this all making it all field these beans this is non tile this is one of the last fields that dad planted you know dad was planting this end of june probably we were chopping full on so they they're not going to be as good as the other field but we'll see i'm going to try to get on board with them Pick this rock up. Look at that John Deere paint on there. Oh, roll it over here in the ditch. I don't know how he didn't break the head. Just jumped in inside with dad here at the at the field these beans are running what 35 35 bushel they're no rain. not bad but they're dry we didn't hit, get much rain they got planted late and uh what's the moisture 16 yeah. percent they were down to 13. but yeah it was a tough year but i mean some of the fields were decent but a lot of these marginal fields the ground just kind of didn't grow much. They're decent right here. Yeah, it's been here. I always wondered why all these heads are 35 footers. Now I know why. 35 footer is better than a 30 footer. Well, just time wise. Yeah, you get a lot done. The combine doesn't care. No, we we're just saying he might go. We go to a 40-foot head to save on time. Time is While these guys have been combining, I just did a farm tour for a professional hockey player here, Justin Abdel Cater. Many of you guys follow hockey. He played for the Red Wings back in 08. He's got a picture here with the with the Stanley Cup, so he had to have been pretty good. Left wing, I didn't get any filming of that because I didn't know him, but he said we probably could have. He's gonna watch the YouTube, so. He wanted, he's a guy that we, we reach out to to promote dairy products. He's a believer in chocolate milk and things like that, so a guy like him, we have him out there drinking it and promoting it with us. So he wanted to tour a farm, never been on a dairy farm before, so. We thought they gave me a call and said, you know, if I wanted to show them around. Is that a pear tree? Apple. Oh, it is a pear tree. That's pear. Restrictions apply. Okay, good. Well, John Deere come out to look at this. They say they ain't never seen a low logger that long. No. <laughs> this combine, look at that. This combine come out of, where did we get that? Iowa? Yeah. Or was it Nebraska? Nebraska come out of Nebraska. We bought it on an online auction. And once they, we got it home, John Deere called us and they, they said they got some prototype parts on this. They had to find out our address and come take them off it and put new ones on. They wanted the data off them. So yeah, we bought this Nebraska and then they trailered it and shipped it up here. We need to get out here with a chainsaw and cut all that shit down around that building. Clean this place up, man. This looks terrible. Well, we were going to move that building, weren't we? We still are. I would. 
Get it out of there. Get, get it out of there, exactly. Like you say, that old tractor right here, that loader, you get something out of that. Where's your farmer account, man? Please. get started milking we got this one in the other field Woo! dry out here he's in good spirits he's moving Hey guys, back at the farm. I'm feeding here. Just so you know, we're keep everybody accountable. My wife and kids are at home. She's probably getting ready to feed them dinner. I'm feeding the cows. The cows are locked in to get milk. So dad's running the combine. Mark's getting in the grain cart. So he just got moved to that field and Greg's running semi dumping soybeans in Brown City. Uh, I got Jack starting milking with Lonnie. And that's that's all of us. That's six people. Three on the farm, three in the field. Wind's picking up. Rain expected to move in early morning. They're trying to wrap up. Not sure. Hey, as much soybeans as possible before it moves in. Cause it's supposed to be 90% chance. It hasn't rained in a while. It's been a very good harvest. I tell you that. We're very thankful for the weather. Uh, if you notice here, there's nothing here. There used to be them silo roofs here. I got all this cleaned up. Uh, the other day when they were, they were combining, they leave us here. And you gotta take care of things. Think of things that are gonna improve the farm and, and go after them. Okay, do you see how I scraped these alleyways out and I got this cleaned up and I've got inside here cleaned up while I'm feeding. That's what's nice about these automatic feeders. Save a lot of time feeding and scraping all at once. Takes time, but a little bit of maintenance to them, but you, you fine tune it, it's not too bad. That bunk's full, I'm gonna switch it over to this bunk. Uh, you heard my dad in the combine. He said time is money and hey, time is more valuable than money. You don't get time back. see switched over the grain will be getting pulled over through the conveyor and this is hay and corn silage out of the first and second silo i like to get up here and watch this belt because it's so long it can get a little squirrely so i just stay up here and watch it cows you're seeing have already been milked when we scrape that alleyway you've seen them all down there that's a big holding area so the cows you're seeing going in these bunks are getting they're getting first dibs on the all-you-can-eat buffet smart ones. 
as this feeder comes back i don't have to watch it so i'll take you down here and show you this holding area again where they're all locked in 200 head in this holding area from here all the way up into that old hip roof barn the original holding area uh, it's funny how you got these cows at number seven um they like to come in last they're like people these cows obviously are a little more laid back and they don't want to they don't care about being first and them other ones uh they got their priorities a little straighter and they get in there get milked get out there first dibs on the feed but all in all they're pretty calm um happy cows like i said when i was giving that farm tour for that professional hockey player today his wife and uh, child they're, they're great people i uh, said they come in they want to get milked uh, they, they eat all that that good food and they produce their bag gets big they want to eat their milk makes them feel a lot better it's kind of like us going to the bathroom let them clear out let's head into the milking parlor uh, take over for Jack so he can feed calves while me and Milani and I milk and the boys are gonna be running until dark we're gonna be milking until dark it seems to be getting dark now by close to seven what's up big mama just got done milking I tell people I got a bail out here I like those people that, that, that came and visited that's like a, a granola bar a, a piece of steak they're just kind of chewing on that's uh, a filler in between the bunks and they love it. Third cutting hay. Evening. Oh, we just old girl. She's a big one. All right, Jack, you can go do calves. Lonnie and I will just keep milking. Yeah, trying to get done. thanks for sticking around in the video hey very good good weather that we had uh, to take them beans off we still got a little bit left we put in about 500 acres of beans and we're down to our last like 80 acres and they just weren't quite mature yet we ended up planting them real late we were chopping mid-june i think a lot of rain came through and then we these were our non-tile fields that we planted last we weren't going to plant them that you have to plant them. You, you can take crop insurance out, but crop insurance does not pay. That that just like covers like basically your inputs. You don't make any money. So we went for it, and they're yielding decent. You know, 30 bushel beans back in the day were okay, but we've gotten 50, 60 bushel before. But that's on when everything goes right. This year, just there wasn't a lot of rain, so it's, that helped us getting all them, them, them that hay off four cuttings of hay, but it hurt us on the crop side so uh, last Saturday I went down to see my nephew Lance those of you guys have been around for a while you remember Lance he was that football player wrestler he milked with me I had him since he was 14 I think he's still only 18 but yeah he's a freshman at Kalamazoo College playing on a football team he, he played been playing pretty good uh, wasn't playing at first but he's got to bust his butt and put the time in and he'll and he'll get some playing time and uh, look forward to seeing him for the next few years so Rochelle and I went down there it was pretty fun to get away from the farm um, 
it's, you know how it is. We get one day off every three weeks here, the boys and I. So it, it was it's different, and you get down to that city like that, and uh, like I saw Rochelle's like. We wouldn't last a week down here, and and guys from the city probably they wouldn't last down here either. All that traffic, man, that was. I was happy to be home. Uh, trust me. So, uh, everything's going good. Did the did the tour for the milk company. Uh, that was, that that was good, and that was a good meeting and talking with him, getting his perspective on life. And that guy was Mr. Hockey for Michigan, um, Stanley Cup winner, and uh, very successful. I think he's only 35 years old. So he's got got a lot of life to go on. He's probably trying to figure out where he's going to go from here after retiring. Or, hey, going through more of my stuff, uh, cleaning out the farmhouse, you know. Uh, Dad moved out, and that to lose a mom, it's been over two years. We're still doing, doing better, but it's something that, you, you know, you think about daily. Like, I think this, this Thanksgiving, I'm now, I've got mom's ashes in an urn. I'm gonna, we're going to set a plate for her for Thanksgiving and Christmas and I think we're at that point where we're going to, you know, it's, it's tough to do if you guys ever been through it, you know, I'm sure most of you have. you got any age to you at all, you've lost a loved one. You know, so we're, it's, it's time to stop acting like, you know, mom was never existed. It's time to start acting like she's, just keep on, like she's still here watching over us and just, she's such a great lady. Keep setting a plate for her so we can keep her legacy going. Um, yeah, and I found this in there. This is when I was overseas in Korea. Um, you just put these on your arm like this, or your uniform, but, and then all these, they saved, mom saved all these letters that I, I wrote home to her when I was over there. And then letters that I sent them, you know, like a, cards to my parents, this is my dad, you're a great dad, thanks for everything you have done for me, you know. This is back when people used to send cards, I don't know if you still do that, but, uh, yeah, I was. It's kind of a over 20 years. It's like, wow. I don't even. I haven't even went through these. But maybe I'll share them with you guys if you're interested in doing that. But so a lot, you know. It's it's life's life's busy. Life's emotional. Life's just to join join the ride. Had a chance to get the family out to the field. Grant didn't get in the combine. Uh, he had to get going. They had to get going home. But uh, he'll. We'll try to get him in that combine for corn. And. Uh, That'll be good. He's gonna be he's gonna be the main man in twenty years probably, huh? I'll be sixty, he'll be he'll be twenty. And I say, Wow, well, he's you're gonna be old. And I say, Yeah, but if I live to be a hundred, he'll be sixty. So it won't be bad then, huh? Farm focus for a hat, tumbler, shirt. Appreciate you stopping. I'll get another video out. We're gonna be probably gonna wait on that soybean field because it's not fully ready. We're gonna switch over to corn. So five hundred acres of beans about in the books and there's probably you know, half your corn, 500 acres of corn, half that's chopping and high moisture, so there's probably 250 acres of corn out, but if everything goes right, we're going to we're gonna hit the ground run. Thank God, no no major breakdowns yet. Put a lot of money in that combine in the off season. You know, we did a, had a combine clinic on it, and then we, we put a lot of new parts in it, so we can smooth sailing, so we'll see what happens. Okay, take care, see you in the next one. God bless.